Salah ad-Din is one of those interesting cases in where an individual earns a legendary status from amongst the descendants of those who fought against him. Over time, he went from being the immediate forerunner of the Antichrist to a hero and role model of the European West. Featuring in poetry and stage plays and even in today's media, video games and movies. In fact, there is an English rugby team called the Saracens, a name they chose as a tribute to Salah ad-Din. I'm Abu Hassan of the History of the Ummah channel, and in this video we will explore Europe's romanticism of Salah ad-Din. One of the ways to explain Salah ad-Din's righteousness and triumph over the Latin Franks was to Christianize him. In one tale that originated around the 13th century, Salah ad-Din remained unsure of the one true religion, and on his deathbed, he summoned representatives of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, and asked them of which of the three religions was true. And they responded in the following manner. Mine, says the Jew, but if I abandoned it, I would adopt Christianity, which is its heir. Mine, says the Saracen, but if I abandoned it, I would adopt Christianity, which is its heir. Mine, says the Christian, and I would not abandon it at any price. Salah ad-Din would then go on to say the following. Those two, if they abandoned their faith, agree they would adopt this ones. But he would never have any other but his own, so I judge this to be the best and choose it. In the Ministry of Reims, there is a fictional eyewitness account that narrates Salah ad-Din's conversion to Christianity just before he died. It mentions that he baptised himself in secret and delves into detail in how he had done it without catching the attention of the Muslims who were watching. In addition to his Christianization, Salah ad-Din was given fictional French ancestry from his mother's side that makes him a descendant to the Count of Pontio. Salah ad-Din wasn't the only Muslim warrior at the time who was given European ancestry, most notably from the others, Zengi, conqueror of Edessa, was given an Austrian mother. In terms of characterization, one of the personality traits that was prevalent among Salah ad-Din's admirers in Europe was Shiverly. You should look at the title of this biography, for example, or this Christian Dutch poem that refers to Salah ad-Din as being saintly, while the Crusaders as wicked and sinful. There are also several fictional accounts of Salah ad-Din receiving a knighthood, such as the following example, which includes Hugh of Tabari, who guides him through the process that involves, yet again, baptism and Christianization. Another characteristic associated to Salah ad-Din in European Romanticism is kindness. For example, in one of the stories found in the Italian Novellino, Salah ad-Din wanted to award 200 marks to a man who presented him with a basket of roses. By mistake, his treasurer wrote 300 instead of 2 on the transaction paper and goes to correct it. However, Salah ad-Din prevents him and informs him, don't correct it, but write 400. What a misfortune it would be if your pen was more generous than me. In another Italian tale, a guest of Salah ad-Din spits in his face after he was asked to spit in the area of his palace, which he deems most vile. But rather than respond angrily, Salah ad-Din smiles and appreciates his sense of humour. Finally, Salah ad-Din is regularly portrayed with wisdom and good judgement. In one French tale, Salah ad-Din disguises himself as a poor Christian pilgrim to test the hospitality of the night hospitallers. They pass the test and he reveals his identity, promising them a hundred Byzants annually for their generosity. The knights then celebrate as they conclude that Salah ad-Din would never break a promise. In the Decameron's collection of stories, Salah ad-Din travels to Europe several times. In one tale, he is impressed by a gentleman who shows him much kindness and judges that if the Christian kings of Europe, 
behave in a manner that is similar to this man's, then they would be invincible on the battlefield. In another tale found in the Decameron, Salah ad Din travels to Europe once again, stopping at Brindisi, Rome and Paris, claiming that his conversion to Christianity depended on the behaviour of the Christians he sees in Europe. However, he is shocked by the state of affairs, believing that the treatment of the poor was unacceptable, and criticises the Pope for his abuse of power, before leaving to Levant, disappointed. Another example of his good judgement is found in the 18th century German play, Nathan the Wise. Salah ad Din corrects a Christian Orientalist, who blamed Christianity for the Templar's behaviour, and informs him that it is wrong to group all the Christians together. So how is it that Salah ad Din became a hero and role model to the European West? The general consensus for modern day historians is that it was through his character and conduct. Real life examples of course, which led to the artificial equivalence mentioned in the video. Interestingly, Salah ad Din was aware of the importance of reputation and you can even make the argument that he predicted his own legacy. However, there was also Nur ad-Din, who was very similar in character and conduct, and yet, he was given hardly any of the romanticism in Europe that Salah ad-Din gained. Which leads me to the next point. In my opinion, what made Salah ad-Din stand out in particular, aside from the character and conduct, was that essentially, it was he who was destined to take Jerusalem. People love the triumphant and respect victorious individuals, even if they arrive at our expense, especially if these individuals endured hardship and struggle. As human beings, we try to associate ourselves with those who are successful. We have already mentioned how Salah ad Din was Christianized and given European ancestry, but even today, we see other communities deployed with the same tactic. For example, how many people from Levant will point out that Steve Jobs had a Syrian biological father, despite little evidence that it meant anything to him? And how many times do we hear of religious communities who spread false rumours that this sportsman or this celebrity has converted to their religion? The reality is, we love what we perceive as successful people. The Crusade era in Levant lasted approximately two centuries, and out of all of the rulers who could have taken Jerusalem, it was Salah ad Din. Both his character and success is why I believe that the Europeans fell in love with him. If you are interested in Islamic history, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to be notified of our next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.